Welcome everybody to this video on health system. Healthcare is considered one of the most important public services. In fact, it has an impact on the life and well-being of all of us. But the solutions envisaged by the states are varied. Steve Stillman, Maurizia De Bellis and Lucia Busatta give an introduction to private and public health systems. They analyze the main differences, the specific approaches, and give some examples. I hope you will enjoy it. From the legal point of view, health systems can be distinguished in two types. We have health systems that are founded through a system of insurance and we have systems that are funded through the uh, general expenditure. Now, in Italy, we had a switch from the first type of system to the second type of system. In particular, during the 20th century and until the 70s, we had a system based on insurance. This type of system, this type of insurance, was provided by the mutue, public entities that were under the control of the Ministry of Labour. But this type of insurance provided services not to the uh, citizen as such, but in particular to the worker. Now, uh, what changed this legal landscape was the approval of the Constitution. So, under Article 32 of the Constitution, the Republic safeguards the right to health as an individual right and a collective interest. Moreover, according to Article 32 of the Constitution, the Republic has also an obligation to provide health care to the poor. So, that means two things that according to Article 32 of our Constitution, first of all, health is a right of the citizen as such and not of the worker. And the second point is that the Republic has an obligation to provide health, to guarantee health. That means that in Italy it would not be possible to have a health system that is entirely private because the Republic has to provide health. But also the Constitution does not say what is the balance between public and private. So there can be an input of private but it is not established under the Constitution which one is this input. Now, in order to enact the Constitution, in the 70s we had a reform, in uh, 78 to be exact, uh, and it was established the National Health Service, so the Servizio Sanitario Nazionale, which made exactly this switch from a system based on insurance to a system based on the fiscal uh, expenditure. From the point of view of an economist, both private and public health systems can provide high quality health care to the general public. Typically, economists believe that the private market is more efficient at providing goods and services. However, health is a market where the customer, in other words, the patient, has very little information about what services, aka which treatments, that they need and how much these services should cost. On the other hand, the healthcare provider is much more informed on, bo on both dimensions. They know about the different treatments that are possible, they know about how much these actually cost. This is known as a problem of asymmetric information, and it makes it really important that the overall system is designed in a way that the incentives for healthcare providers encourage them to deliver the appropriate treatment for patients. This can be done well or poorly by either public or private systems, and it's really all about the details about how the incentives work for the doctors, for the other healthcare providers, and also for the incentives for patients. Healthcare systems can be divided into two main categories. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, the so-called beverage model, the national healthcare systems, such as in Italy or in the United Kingdom. 
um, national healthcare systems are funded through general taxations and they are aimed at granting uh, universal coverage. This means that all individuals belonging to that healthcare systems are uh, equal in the point of access to medical services. The second broad category is uh, the so-called Bismarck uh, uh, healthcare model. And uh, uh, the main example of that is uh, uh, the German healthcare system. Uh, in this model, healthcare is not publicly funded, but it is based on ins an insurance system. Uh, this means that through the labor relationship, the worker has an insurance for access to medical services. In general terms, the role of healthcare system is to grant individual access to medical treatments uh, he or she needs. Uh, well, the problem is that uh, depending on the different kind of a healthcare system, we can have different um, levels of uh, health coverage. And this has an impact on the right to healthcare of individuals. Um, very often, the provision of a public healthcare system, such as the Italian one, is linked to a strong protection of the right to healthcare uh, at the constitutional level. This, as I have already said, is the case of Italy, but also of Spain. Different systems showed uh, over time different problems. So in particular, the system of Mutue showed that uh, it had one main shortcomings. It was that it did not have universal coverage. So with the establishment in the 70s of the national health system, the main purpose was the one of ensuring universal coverage. But on the other hand, there was ma one main shortcoming. It was the one of the increase, extreme increase in cost. Why? Because the main uh, provider of the service were public entities, the Unità Sanitarie Locali, USL, and these were under the control of the municipalities. But the municipalities did not perform this control effectively. Also, according to the system set up in the 70s, health was provided for free to all the citizens. So during the 90s, uh, there was an attempt to address these shortcomings. And in particular, with, this was done with three main changes. The first change was uh, leading role of the regions instead of the municipalities. The second change was a change in the Unità Sanitarie Locali that were changed in Aziende Sanitarie Locali, leading to a full economic autonomy. And the third change was the one of establishing a principle of participation in costs of the citizens. Now, these uh, changes uh, were led to uh, the previous shortcomings, but there was another problem that raised, which was the one of the balance in the competences of the regions. Now, according to our constitution, we have a competence of the region, a legislative competence of the regions for the organization of the health system. But on the other hand, we also have an exclusive competence of the state to establish the minimum levels of protections of certain social rights, such as health. There are two main issues with privately provided health care. The first is making sure that healthcare providers do not have incentives to overtreat or overcharge patients. In most private systems, insurance companies cover the cost 
cover most of the cost of treatments, which gives doctors incentives to potentially provide unnecessary or overpriced procedures or to overcharge patients. At the same time, patients have very little incentive to question their doctors and do not typically care what different procedures cost because they're typically paying only a, a small percentage of the overall cost. The second concern is one of equity. In a private system, if everyone has to pay for health care, then poorer individuals may not be able to get necessary treatments, and as a society, we may worry about this. There are also two main issues with publicly provided health care. First, depending on how they are reimbursed, public health care providers may also have incentives to provide uh, either the wrong number of procedures. For example, if they are reimbursed for each procedure that they perform, they might have incentives to perform too many procedures. Or on the other hand, if they're reimbursed a flat fee for every patient visit or every patient that's enrolled with the clinic, they may have incentives to not see patients or to provide too few procedures. Second, there typically is little incentive for healthcare providers in public systems to invest in new technologies or new ways of providing healthcare, as they don't typically benefit financially from making these types of changes, and often that there, there's costs. You know, so developing new technology has costs, and they don't necessarily get any of the, the rewards for doing this. So you can see in both the public and private system, there are sort of there are different potential problems. In general terms, uh, it is self-evident that private healthcare systems do not provide universal healthcare coverage. This means that the poorest or the most fragile people, persons of the population, uh, might not be granted access to uh, medical services. To overcome these problems, states with private healthcare systems try to provide for some kind of subsidiary instruments to grant a wider uh, healthcare coverage. To make an example, let's think about uh, Medicare or Medicaid in the Obama uh, healthcare reform, or some other sorts of uh, um, coverage provided at a state level, for example, uh, with Krankenkasse in uh, Germany. On the other side, thinking about public healthcare system, um, one problem might be that uh, uh, the state has to daily fight against the problem of sustainability of uh, public health care services and with the problem of resource allocation. What does it mean? Public funds will be never able to uh, completely um, provide for um, the, all the health care needs of the population and of course uh, health care systems have to make hard choices. Uh, these charges are aimed at uh, rationalize and prioritize the healthcare expenditure in order to meet the highest level possible of the needs of the population. But of course, somebody will, something might not be uh, possible to be covered. Um, Another aspect that we can take into account is that a good point of public healthcare system is that they um, offer a wider coverage for the poorest and for the uh, weakest persons in the population. This is a very good point also because it contributes to uh, avoid the uh, enlargement of social inequalities. Another aspect that we should take into account concerns uh, medical and scientific progress. While for both uh, public or private healthcare systems, this is the real challenge for the contemporary years. What does this mean? This means that um, medical sciences um, develop rather quickly and uh, for healthcare systems might be quite difficult to keep pace with the scientific development in the medical area. Why? This is because um, 
in any case, either within a public healthcare system or within a private one, once the medical progress, the medical, the, the new medical device is available, then a decision has to be taken before that medical treatment is actually available, accessible for individuals. This means that if we are within a public healthcare system, an administrative decision has to be taken. Whereas if we are within a private healthcare system, um, a market decision has to be taken. But if we consider the rapidity, the quickness of uh, medical development, then we can understand that once a decision ha has been taken, then uh, another one will necessarily follow. This has been referred to in literature with the paradox of healthcare. That means that once we solve one of the uh, many needs of healthcare of the population, then we have a new problem to deal with. I will provide two examples, one uh, which shows the first problem, so the one of the fragmentation of competences uh, across the regions, and the second one uh, is about the cost of the services. So the first example about how this different uh, division of competence between the state and the region can lead to a fragmentation in the system. So the fact that the regions have a competence, a legislative competence to uh, set the organization of the health system can lead to a differentiation in the level of protection of the fundamental right to health in the country. This is why what is pivotal to uh, uh, address this problem is the one of establishing the essential levels of protections, the so-called LEA, which is a key uh, element to, for the functioning of the system, but was very problematic in the last years. So there was a postponement in updating uh, these levels of protection. Now, the second example is about the cost of the service. As I said, uh, the system that was in place between the 70s, the Mutwe was based on insurance. And the one that was based in the 70s led to an increase in the cost of the service. So in the 90s, uh, what was done to address this problem is the one of participation of the citizen to the cost of the service, the so-called ticket. Now, what is uh, most uh, crucial at the moment about the cost of the service is the way private uh, clinics can also provide health services that are actually uh, paid by the national health system. Why? Because some of these private clinics are recognized by the public through a system that is called accreditamento. Through this system, some private entities are uh, recognized by the public because they meet certain levels and certain standards uh, for the service, for example. But at the same time, it is not possible to recognize all the services that these accredited entities provide because otherwise this would lead to another increase in the cost of the health system. So what we have in place is a system of agreements. These agreements actually uh, set the level of the um, uh, number of services that one accredited entity can provide and also the maximum amount of the cost. Otherwise, the participation of the party or the private uh, clinic would lead to an increase in the cost. 
I'll give a couple of different examples of both public and private systems. Switzerland is a country that has a fully private system with excellent health outcomes. Their health insurance is mandatory and prices for the standard basic policy are set by a government agency and vary only by gender, age, and the proportion of costs paid by the individual. In other words, it's a lot like how automobile insurance works in many countries. The cost of different procedures is also set by the government. This ensures that all individuals are, are covered by the system and eliminates the equity concerns. And it also provides some cost containment because procedure, procedural costs are, are, are set. However, this, the system is quite expensive and there are concerns, especially within Switzerland, that doctors have incentives to provide unnecessary services because this is basically the only way that they can, they can earn more. So they're, they're private providers and the only thing they really control is the number of services they provide. So while the, while the overall performance of the system is quite good, this is, this is one of the concerns. Of course, the US is an example of a country with a fully private system that mostly seems to work poorly. There, many people until recent reforms were not covered by the system at all and would often not be able to get necessary procedures. And overall, the system is extremely expensive as healthcare providers have incentives to provide unnes often unnecessary services and often to overcharge. In other words, it's a fully private market where everyone gets to set their own costs, yet insurance companies pay most of these costs and, and not the people. On the other hand, the US health sector invests massively in developing new technologies that obviously allow them to make more profits, but also presumably benefit patients all around the world. And this is one of the trade-offs in the private set system is that of course, as their incentives are provided for people to, to make money, they also have maybe more incentives to, to innovate. In terms of the public system, you also see sort of a, a range of approaches. So Italy is a country with a fully public system that has excellent health outcomes. Here in Italy, a, a combination of regulation and payment incentives are used to incentivize health providers to provide the appropriate number of procedures for patients. For this reason, Italy doesn't seem to have the, doesn't have the queuing problem that you see in other public health systems, for example, in the UK. So the UK only prioritizes patients by patient need, which of course has very strong equity, but on the other hand, often leads to very long waits to, to receive procedures. And this is something Italy is, has avoided by having more incentivization sort of at the at the doctor, at the doctor level, at the healthcare provider level. However, on the other hand, you might have some, I think, slight more equity concerns in Italy that people with different, similar health problems receive different levels of services. And actually, one thing that's very interesting in the healthcare world is that some countries, for example, Austria, Germany, uh, Australia now, are sort of pushing towards having hybrid systems that try to combine both parts of the public and the private system. So typically these systems, they have a, a public insurance system, but then they have incentives based usually in the tax system for people to purchase private health care. And then doctors are reimbursed through a combination of both public and private um, insurance providers. I mean, the idea of these systems is to try to have the kind of the best of both worlds. So to have the the, the, the equity of the public system, but more of the incentives of the private system. I think it's not, it's not clear that how well these systems work because obviously the, in the end, the details are very important and getting the incentives right is particularly difficult when you have sort of these two overlapping systems. So, you know, doctors might have incentives to only try to stay in the private system because they can earn more. Public system doctors may have different incentives also. And this is kind of one of the concerns sort of in these hybrid systems. Um, but obviously they, they, they potentially allow for the, the best of both worlds. There are many examples of the problems that healthcare systems are facing uh, almost every day. Uh, well, we need, of course, to make a choice. And uh, a very good example of the struggle for sustainability of healthcare systems in publicly funded healthcare systems, such as the NHS in the UK or even the national healthcare system in Italy are copayment fees. What are copayment fees? Well, basically, um, public healthcare system are uh, universal and equal in point of access to healthcare service. And with this, it goes uh, an idea of um, 
it's gratuitous. The, the fact that healthcare should be free in point of access, but this is not compulsory. Publicly funded healthcare systems are struggling with sustainability because they cannot grant everything to everybody. So they have to rationalize, they have to prioritize. An example of these are waiting lists for access to medical services. Another example are copayment fees. Copayment fees are a short amount of money that an individual has to pay in order to have access to a specific medical treatment. In the year of the global economic crisis, publicly funded healthcare system had to make terrible choices. And among them, in Italy, for example, the national healthcare system decided to increase the ordinary copayment fee to have access to uh, medical treatments. What happened? Of course, the decision was highly criticized because um, it affected, of course, the poorest. It mostly affects the poorest. And uh, uh, nevertheless, there were no choices at the moment to reduce the amount of payment fees. On the other side, though, in order to give effectiveness to Article 32 of the Italian Constitution, which provides, among um, other things, that the person in lack of economic resources shall be granted free access to medical services, then I was saying in order to give effectiveness to Article 32 of the Constitution, um, the law provides for some specific cause of exemptions for, uh, from the um, copayment fee for people in lack of financial resources. Another example that uh, concerns the problem of coverage of medical services through health insurance concerns private healthcare systems. In private healthcare systems, health insurance is based on the market of healthcare uh, services and healthcare insurances. As an outcome of the Obama reforms in the past few years, um, employers were um, obliged to provide to their workers some specific medical treatments within the health insurance they were uh, granted through the work relationship. Among these, there, were, there was the case of um, religious-oriented um, employers and their objection to the granting of uh, some specific medical treatment such as contraceptions or abortion in some cases. The case arrived up to the Supreme Court of the United States which said that the fact that these employers were obliged to grant this specific medical treatment was actually in contrast with the freedom of religion as provided by the United States Constitution and by specific legislation. With regards to access to medical services and to um, the universal coverage and the need to provide um, medical treatments uh, to the widest number of people possible, this case shows us that within a a private healthcare system, the rules of the market of insurances might clash with um, religious beliefs or even the ethical sensibility of some employers. And this might, at the end, affect the healthcare of the individual worker and the individual person.